This is Alan Lazard, a.k.a. The Lazard King, wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in indeed. Welcome back. Welcome. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Thursday, May 21st. Back in studio today. What? I can see both of you. And smell. it's quite the picture. Good I'll be smell, honest with smell you. Smell both of you. Mm-hmm. Mike's got the hat on. Well, like I st- <laughs> still haven't gotten a haircut. I don't know when I'm going to get to the barber. But I don't know what you're allowed to do right now. Yeah. Can you get a haircut? Uh, I think you can think legally you can. get a haircut in Arizona now. You are The salons are open. I ain't going. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I'm, like, I'm, I'm fine with a hat for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> I'm excited to be back in the studio with you guys. We came in to film some videos for the Ultimate Draft Kit. Mm. Got the 100-plus player profile videos. By the way, 11 days away until the Ultimate Draft <laughs> Kit is released. So if you want the lowest price before June 1st, now's the time to get it, ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, you'll get instant access to Dynasty Rookie Rankings. But we were in here filming some videos, some wide receiver p- profile videos. We said, hey, let's do a show Yeah, in the studio. Now, no promises that we're back permanently, but all of our families, I know we've been, we've been staying, staying safe. Mm-hmm. So we're, we, we came in today, we're doing the show, and it feels great. It is, it is a, a real treat to be here under the bright lights of the studio. It is a lot brighter than my room. <laughs> you're, you're both at a much higher resolution than I remember you. <laughs> Also, uh, far less sweaty <laughs> it, over on my side of the desk. I've we, I've been dealing with unbelievable sweat problems <laughs> in, in my office. I don't know what it is, but it's, you're it's more of a it's really all it's right. One. It's all right yeah, side. It's, yeah, the the right side of my my arm my right armpit. By the end of the show, I could wring it out. The left side, <laughs> you know, it's a little damp. But I don't know what's going on up in that room. I need to have it tested and over for ghosts. I mean, it's been a couple of months. You really haven't been able to. Engineer yourself a right pit solution. I do. I have a fan. I have okay. a fan. You don't have enough. Wait, you have a there fan is, yes. on your right yes. side, and there you're is still a, there is a desktop fan that is po- that is pointed precise yeah. with precision right at the armpit. Are you gonna have to hold the right arm up during the whole show? <laughs> that might be the solution, Mike. You might have to go hands up. All right. Well, next show. We'll Whee! I'll just put a roller coaster on my green screen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. But uh, I'm very excited to be here with you. We have buy sell on the show today. Some interesting news to talk about. Some mailbag. It's going to be a fun episode of the show. You can follow us on YouTube. You can see us back in studio. YouTube.com/slash the Fantasy Footballers. Subscribe. Kick the uh, click the bell. <laughs> you can kick it too. You can ch- you can check out Mike's totally. Non sweaty pits on the YouTube. So they're still dry, man. I oh think. man, spectacular! I think, yeah, we're all right. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Appreciate everybody subscribing, reviewing, listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, ad free on Stitcher Premium, wherever you're listening. Excited to be with you, uh, Jason. Your pits are in good shape. Yeah, no, I'm doing real well. Okay, let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. We were going to do some buy sell, but I'm going to detour real quick. Uh oh! Just because it is wonderful to also see both of our producers here in studio, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, tucked away across the room. But thank you both for all of the legwork that you've done over the last two months, as we've been, you know, juggling quarantine and at home and different internets, uh, router restarts and low resolution mic robot voices, and you have made it all spectacular. And I can tell you, speaking on behalf of the Foot Clan this time, that they are so thankful for that because as far as they know, the the, the podcast listeners, I don't I don't know that they can tell that yeah. there's been a difference. And that's all on you guys. So and thank you very much. It's amazing because I know some, you know, there are major, major companies that 
you know, make podcasts in studio all around the world that because of this time, you go and you listen to those and they sound like they're all at home. It doesn't sound the same because it's not the same and you guys have made us sound great. No, I, I have an email in my inbox right now that's like, um, can you help me? Help help us. Help us get to the sound quality no, that you got. No, they're our producers. <laughs> they're ours. If you buy or sell, I'm buying both of them. Actually, that's all I'm saying. What what could we fetch on the open market? That's uh, for one of them. You like sell one because yeah. we got we got two. Go to eBay.com <laughs> slash fantasy footballers. <laughs> if if we put them both up for bid and we just take whoever sells for most, that's oh. kind of the better thing for our yeah. economy here. All right, my wheels are turning. This went from thank you to we're <laughs> selling you on the open market really quickly. Well, I refuse to work for anyone else. Oh, oh a little man. Jordan situation. Dang, lowering lower the salary. <laughs> Lowering the salary. <laughs> that's, that's I miss nice, that. Uh, all right. Buy, sell. Uh, we're looking at, uh, looks like Brooks said an over-under of five and a half. We're looking at number of players to catch double-digit touchdowns in 2020. Because last year, we only had three players in the NFL with uh, double-digit receiving touchdowns. That was Mark Andrews, Cooper Cup, Kenny Galladay. Mm, but, back so in, smooth. but back in 2018, we had nine of them. Mm -hmm. Antonio Brown, Devontae Adams, Ebron, Tyreek. Hopkins, Kelsey, Ridley, Lockett, Mike Williams. Oh, Mike Williams. Remember that? Yeah, I do. It's two so, years ago. Over under five and a half. <laughs> Not, uh, you guys remember this thing two years ago? I'll, I guess I'll just sell it. I think I'll take the under. I don't know if I even can apply like strong logic to my answer here. I feel like I'm just guessing, but I would say about I think five players will do it. So, so here's what's interesting. Obviously, we stat out everybody for the ultimate draft kit, and and when we're statting these out, we are. I guess trying. I could look at that. Yeah, you, you, you could look at that. Um, Let's see if I'm a buy or sell. You know, the the reality is we stat out things that are probable, not you know predicting. All the I, I, all the outliers that could happen are not in your, right. your, your I don't, ranking. I don't have anybody out there with fifteen receiving touchdowns because that you know that happens and that could very well happen this year. But that's not what I'm going to project. Yeah, but just think of the glory if you made that call. I if have, you picked the guy with fifteen. I have two players um, who are double digit touchdowns Ooh. according to my rankings. Only two, but I have six players who are at nine. Mm. So I am very very close. But I'm going to stick with my rankings. I will. I will, I will take two? the under. My two are Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams. I have two as well. It's Amari Cooper and Tyreek Hill. Oh. But right. I have Adams, Cup, Galladay, and Andrews all at nine. And I've got Michael Thomas, Cup, Galladay, Marquise Brown, Jared Cook, and Travis <laughs> Kelsey at nine. All right. And you and Hollywood this year. Hollywood. You yeah. may have to, you know, yeah, we're, we're, step up your game there. That's going to be my guy, that Hollywood gonna get out of control that this over under it tried to catch me slipping it tried yeah but i have five i oh. have projected out five players who i believe will hit the double digit targets and it's actually a i'm calling for a repeat of the same three guys from last year but i will add in Devonte adams and adam thielen oh wow I, I could. I got Adam thielen down for 10 touchdowns it. uh there so were i'm selling because i had five if you're curious in 2017 it was three so back down to three, five in 2016, but 13 players in 2015. It was a good year. Ted Ginn was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, hey, Jay, you remember that? I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> it's it's a little further back. but <laughs> That was Buy or Sell brought to you by Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. BALLERS. And get a $10 credit. Dollars. Don't use BALLERS. Ballers. And don't get a ten dollar credit. That's true. That, that is, is an option, but it's uh, it's a dumb one. I don't know why you would do that. It's a dumb that. option. <laughs> Stupid. Let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, we've talked about the Seahawks backfield. Talked about Chris Carson recently. A lot of risk, it seems. Uh, my guy last year, Chris Carson. Really strong start. Dealt with some fumbles. Still helped a lot of people. I'm not as confident that he'll be the guy this year. There had been Marshawn Lynch rumors, and now the Seahawks have made an offer to Devonta Freeman. Mm. Now, he turned it down. But, according to Adam Kaplan, they extended the offer because they don't think Rashad Penny will be ready for week one. Freeman is 28, but I think we all agree 
has lost a step, at least it, it looks looked like that way it, for yeah. the past year and a half. So how does Freeman have the gall to turn down offers right now? Carlos Hyde did that. They're, I mean, Carlos Hyde. Yeah. You know, you believe that you are what you are, and you only got a small window. And You're, sometimes he what he's betting on is the situation where someone gets hurt in training camp because it it's honestly that's a good bet. It happens every single year, but will a Will a running back position of note open up that they're willing to to pay him? That would surprise me. It's it, if I were Freeman. I mean, I, I guess I have no idea what the contract is, so I won't even. Comment yeah, this on this, it. this is. But this news coming out, Seattle trying to go get that's the news, Devonta yeah. Freeman. That's that's the important thing for fantasy. This is why right now Chris Carson is so high in my rankings. This is why I have him for three hundred rushing attempts because they're trying to find another backup. Because they the there aren't other people there. Well, that, and, that's and the so, question is. Do, do, if they sign Freeman, oh, if Freeman relents in a month and goes, oh wow, my market is, is what everybody's been telling me, Chris, which Carson. is why that's called the Jadavian Clowney problem. Mm. But uh, what happened? Does he hurt your view of Chris Carson very much? Because it's not majorly, a, majorly, majorly. It would not why. affect me very much at all. Here's why it's a major change to me because the reason that I have Chris Carson with 300 carries is almost solely because the backfield is an injured Rashard Penny and a rookie, you know, later round DJ Chris Carson. Dallas. Well, Chris Carson should be back in plenty of time before the, the, the first week. His Let, timeline yeah. uh, was, was fine. So. I, but I heard the word should. Well, I, I mean, I, I don't know the future if he, but, but I mean, but, but the question is it's, it's a variable word. It's a, it's not a Chris Carson is ready for week one. It's, He's supposed to be ready. It's like Seattle needs to get people in the, Se in the Seattle room. has said that he'll be back, and there's no signs that he's, he won't be. But he had 278 carries last year. Penny had 65. Homer had 18. This was all Carson last year. Yes. So I don't know what Freeman represents depth-wise. I don't know if if that is a bridge to Penny as the backup, if that well, if impacts you very much. If Penny's supposed to play this very small role, then Freeman plays a small role for a few weeks, and it shouldn't affect Carson. It's the if they are actually trying to get Marshawn Lynch back on the team, even though I think Freeman has lost a step at this point, Freeman is, would be better for the team than Marshawn would be. Okay, uh, the Forty ers Raheem Mostert, a little bit of a hype train here. Quote: Put on some more muscle mm. in order to shoulder a two hundred carry workload this season. I am. Very and have been very excited about Raheem Mostert's potential this upcoming season. They're such a good running team. I realized that we don't know how the carry breakdown. We don't know whether right. McKinnon will be okay for some role, and we don't know whether it'll be a Coleman week or a Mostert week. But I'm trusting the film, and the film tells me Raheem Mostert is their best running back. He was 5.6 yards per carry. That also and, tells me he was their best running back. <laughs> and that's surprising because every single time that I watched you him thought get the it'd ball, be seven it was or eight. eight. Yeah. It was like he just he was uh, he was electric, but he only had 100, 137 carries last year. So he's you know But Matt Burita's gone. Jarek McKinnon is back in theory. Raheem Mostert proved himself over the back half of the year to the point where look, they made a Super Bowl run and he was the backbone right. of that team. Those are situations for fantasy, at least for me, that I'm looking to. To say, you know, there's the consensus, and then there's outliers and players that are, have the chance to emerge. And if you give Raheem Mostert 200 carries in San Francisco, aren't you excited about that? Yeah, th this is one of those situations. It, it pops up every single year. Do you take the player uh, with the cost, or do you take the value? Do you take the, the, the second player who looks like he could be in an equal competition with Raheem Mostert? I'm talking about Tevin Coleman, who... He was the featured guy for a while over the second half of the year. It really turned into the Raheem Mostert show, except for the one playoff game. For me, this is a scenario where I'm taking I'm taking the higher priced guy. I often you'll hear us on the show. Oh, I'll just just take the value. Well, I'm trying to tell you, it, it, we don't just always take the value. Sometimes we'll we'll pay up. I'll pay the premium. And if I'm and going, Mostert's the premium. And if I'm going in on San Francisco's running game, I will pay the premium. I'm going to take the shot for Raheem Mostert. Mostert or Leonard Fournette right now? Fournette. As of right now, Fournette, but that's a uh, that is that's a house of cards that could come crumbling down any day. I have Mostert. 
in that situation, All right. but they're pretty closely ranked. So it seems like closer. They're, they're closer to each mm. other. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Look, man, I've been out of the uh, studio for a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. I, I gotta get some practice swings yeah, in. Yeah, no, it's good, man. It's good. Oh, oh man. All right, the Athletics Jake Glazer believes Taysom Hill will be the guy Stop. for the Saints after <laughs> Drew Brees retires. Stop it. Really? That, that's Stop. your that's your response. Yes, everyone says this. That's th- no, he's not. Why? Why? Because they had their quarterback go down to injury last year. And you want to know who stepped in? Not Taysom Hill. And then. They, after Teddy leaves, you want to know what they did? They went and signed Jameis Winston as as a backup quarterback. Taysom, I mean, you don't need to carry three quarterbacks in the NFL if you've got your backup. I mean, Taysom Hill's not a quarterback. Well, they, you, I, I don't buy that logic entirely. I mean, they've they've talked about why that is. I mean, Taysom Hill, they use him all over the field. They use him in special teams. They use him to block. They use him to catch the football. That he's part of a design. For the team now, without with Drew Brees in the offense, yeah, and I just I don't I, and I I believe that that is. You ever met Sean Payton? You ever listen to him talk? I think Sean Payton believes very very firmly that he can make Taysom Hill a NFL starter. That yeah. is his pet project. I, I don't disagree with you. Where where I side with Jason is this organization. It is a professional NFL team. Heading into next year, if this is Drew Brees' last year. Which, by the way, what are your odds on that? Because I got it about 90. 80%. Yeah. yeah, I would say much higher than not. But as of right now, Taysom Hill is going to be 30 years old in August. And he will have thrown the ball in the NFL 15 times. That You're saying that's the future of my team. That's Maybe, maybe it could happen. It would be an absolutely wild story but i tend to side more with jason that it, it did also take two playoff uh two separate playoff games where he threw a pass to get up to 15 yes i i, I had to go and i counted him it's 13 regular season passes he's thrown it in the playoffs twice I just, you're really you're really gonna turn your team over to that guy I think it's a possibility, and so does Jay Glazer here. I, I, well, no, Jay Glazer has been in on it from the beginning. Most Jay qu- Glazer has stock in Taysom Look, Hill. Most quarterbacks have uh, not thrown the ball at all until they become quarterbacks and throw the ball. I mean, there are a but lot. They're of, not, but they're not. But they're not turning. Fifth, they're fifth graders at that point. <laughs> no, I'm saying they're not turning 31 before they get their first start in the NFL. That is correct, and that's a fair point. Jamie Swinson's 26. He won't be under contract next year but he will have experience in the system and the team you know they're they're not stupid they're going to give both i mean both guys could have an opportunity let me ask you this drew Brees gets injured week five who's the quarterback it's probably Jameis winston so i don't see why Taysom hill would be their quarterback of the future that's just what i'm saying yeah i i understand i understand but that, that same thing happened last year too and they made bridgewater so and then they gave Taysom hill a bunch of money yeah they did and then signed winston <laughs> <laughs> because you need more quarterbacks. You don't need three quarterbacks. You do when you play one quarterback all the time on your regular offense. If Taysom Hill gets hurt, you you have to have. I mean, you got a different situation there. But hey, we'll find we out. We will. That's the glorious thing about all these predictions. All right, let's go ahead and. Uh, mm. well, Mike, you you warm a up. lot of pressure. Before guys. I hit the mailbag drop. I'll I'll repeat what I said earlier. Eleven oh. days left. The ultimate draft kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Me 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 me. Make sure you check it out. It's going to be beautiful. U D K. It's going to be spectacular. <laughs> the app is upgraded. The charts are upgraded. There's new additions. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, and we're going to have a football season, and it's going to be the greatest one ever. Mike, uh, I can't wait any longer. I hope you're ready. I'm ready. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ah! Ooh. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it that was so much I more because <laughs> when we're on Zoom, honestly, the, it doesn't line up. No, it doesn't. It lines up for me perfectly. Yeah, and it lines Every up time. for the, the end user. But just so you know. Oh, I'm well we aware. We hear Mike on Super Delay and he just sounds stupid. Yes. Yeah. You're never coming Earth. out with the right well, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really <laughs> stupid bit to start. Uh, I disagree. It's spectacular. <laughs> All right. If you have a question for the show, head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. 
You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. We do have a voicemail question we'll start with. And uh, it's a young fantasy fan that has a question for Excellent. us. All right. Hi. My question is, in a standard scoring non-PPR league, who would you choose as the second overall pick in the first round? Thank you. Bye. Uh, second overall pick, uh, Christian McCaffrey. I'd like him to drop <laughs> if to he's number there, two. <laughs> I will take Christian McCaffrey. But non PPR, that being thrown out there, I know Saquon, Zeke. Those are those are both players in that category. Uh, does it go away from Saquon if it's fully non PPR? Are you looking at Zeke in that situation, or is it Saquon for you? Jay, who who do you got? You got Saquon or Zeke as your number two guy? I have Zeke. So I have. Zeke as well um I mean Saquon is such a, a PPR machine he, he's always bumped up there and if you look at okay touchdowns are really valuable in standard scoring leagues who's got the better offense who ha- who's going to have the more opportunities now Saquon could end up with more touchdowns than Zeke it's happened before but I would put the the betting odds on Zeke to have more chances near the goal line All right, I'm trying to find out my point total so I got I got I have Barkley by about 15 points. In a non-PPR. In a non-PPR, yeah. All right, thanks for the question. Here's a question from Ian in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Sheboygan? Just so you know, Jay, that's not a bonjour. Sheboygan. I was, I was really Why itching not? for a The bonjour. girl you love to get. Sheboygan. <laughs> yeah, yes, Jason, high five! That was a deep cut, man. I wasn't sure if you... If anyone would get it. I mean, what else was there to say there? I was yeah. hoping. It, we also, I need to go wash my hands after. Yeah, that. I was going to say. <laughs> this is a problem. Did you just high five? Oh, we other? did. Okay. S- uh, sanitation. <laughs> sanitation. <laughs> clean up on. Uh, clean up. Judge Giamatti, can I'll you get some sanitizer here. over just here? Just leave this here. This is why we've stayed. We're on like 60 day quarantines each, though. I think you guys are okay. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't trust this. Here's character. the thing, Mike. If you don't have it, you can't give it to me. And if I can't, if I don't have it, I can't give it to you. But I am positive we just created it right there. Oh, with the high five. Yeah, the high five creates it. Don't worry, we're sanitizing. <laughs> My goodness, I'm staying over here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, this is a new world. This is a new wild west. Isn't it weird though? I mean, just isn't it funny how science can get thrown out the window there, and it's just like yes. Feels completely weird. Yes. I watch. I can't watch TV shows anymore. <laughs> if I watch something that was filmed, and there are now groups of people super close together, what are you doing? I'm like, oh come on, that's very scary. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. This is totally unrealistic. I saw a picture of our live tour from last summer. I'm like, get away from each other. <laughs> Move. <laughs> oh, I can't wait gosh. for the world to come back. <laughs> that wouldn't be so bad. Yeah. All right, uh, Ian in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. What are your thoughts on eliminating the tight end position completely Mm. and going with two flex spots instead? Do you feel the position is weak enough to consider a change like that? I am am completely uh, fine with it. I I wouldn't say that I would uh, fight for it because you would still have tight ends in that situation. You would cycle the tight ends into the flex or into uh you know you can even put them in you know just a wide receiver tight end flex something like 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 that pass catchers um so yeah you'd have your mark andrews and kelsey's and kittles and uh you know a handful of people that are involved and what that does is it makes it a little bit more of a a fair playing field and and fair there is in air quotes because you have the choice to draft Kelsey or Kittle or Andrews early and sacrifice elsewhere. I like the strategy. I don't have any reason to change it, but I actually do think it's it, it, that it's a fine change if people have a problem with the tight ends. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't be pulling the tight end out. I think it's a great draft dynamic. I think it's a fun right. thing to try to identify the Jonu Smiths or the Mike Gesickis of the world and or the Kittles of years past, Mark Andrews last year. That's just a strategic element that I don't see the need to remove because the same kind of logic would apply of um, just, you know, seven flex spots. I mean, just start whatever well, position it, you want. It's like adding a, a super flex. It's adding another quarterback where you're trying to make this position inside the overall team uh, at like create more of a value or make it more part of everything. So I, I'm not removing tight end. I like the idea of deciding how I'm going to construct my team. Am I going to just punt that position and try and overpower with my running backs or my wide receivers or do I stabilize that and 
and take the hit somewhere else. It's it's all part of the game of balancing how the points are coming in. All right, this next question is a keeper question from Ryan in New Jersey. Should I keep Dalvin Cook in the late second round or Lamar Jackson in the 16th oh, round? Oh, my goodness. Thanks, guys. Big fan of the show. Now, I appreciate oh. the question, although it is uh, excruciating because Dalvin Cook in yes. the second, obviously. That's a value. It's a value. It's not the value that Lamar Jackson for free is. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a hard one for me. I'll be taking Lamar. I'm taking Lamar Jackson. If I can get <laughs> Lamar Jackson in the 16th round, I'll draft someone good in the second. And and here's the deal. They won't be as good as Dalvin Cook. But the gap between who I'm getting in the second round to Dalvin Cook versus who I'm getting in the 16th round or or you know, I would draft a quarterback in the 10th round to to Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I'll sign me up for. And how fun is it to have Lamar Jackson? Like I don't get Lamar Jackson. A lot of our listeners don't get the opportunity because they're not going to draft an early quarterback. You're not, and you get him. So that's, that's I actually fun. I love being put in the position where I can pick him in a question because yeah, I think we that's don't. Jay it's like what you're saying. Like we just don't get to do it, and it almost comes across as though because we're late round quarterback advocates, it's like we don't want a great quarterback <laughs> or we don't want the best quarterbacks. I mean, I would like Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes to be my quarterback. I will take Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Harris in Moses Lake, Washington says, with Robbie Anderson gone and a wasteland at tight end in New York. Well, hold your horses there. Mm. Hold your horses. Mm. Shouldn't this make Jamison Crowder a huge value? What is his ceiling and floor with no real veteran competition? Well, I, I agree Crowder could be a value. Yes, but, I do agree with that. But I disagree with the contention that it is a wasteland at tight end in New York. In fact, I think Chris oh, Herndon has well, a got started up again. huge opportunity. You got us that that thing's gonna take it's a post type huge sleeper. amount of gas to Last start. Last year, Chris Herndon was someone that people were all about. They were really excited. He I was, we at he least was in the UDK. Yeah, Andy and I were were about the Herndon life. Yeah, I mean, and, and then he, and then he, he was up, not about he it. Was, <laughs> <laughs> he only played in one game, uh, but he's coming back. And reports out of the Jets area are are that um, they expect big things for Herndon this year. But to the question of Jamison Crowder, I think he will get a ton of targets like he usually does. I was going to say, he's not a player that's going to take a step forward. He will be what he is. Yeah. But especially in a PPR, yeah, there should be extreme value for Jamison Crowder. I've got him with 125 targets and not getting to 900 yards. Now, if I recall, Herndon was suspended then on his return from suspension got hurt. Correct. That is correct. Well done. <laughs> so, but now, but now, no longer suspended. That's true. Or hurt. We hope. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. Chris in Liverpool. Oh, oh bonjour. There you go. In a super flex league draft. When do you suggest taking quarterbacks? In mocks, they fly off the board early. Mahomes and Jackson are always off the board before the middle of the second round. PPR, super flex. Where do you suggest taking quarterbacks? You know, we're, we've always advocated the tier-based drafting. Uh, the ultimate draft kit, we do all of the positions in tiers. And so it doesn't really change going to a super flex saying um, – you know, you're drafting quarterbacks not based on I don't draft until the 10th round. You're drafting quarterbacks based on I need someone from this tier. That's where I feel comfortable. That's where I think the value is. And then if in your specific league, in a one quarterback league, that tier of quarterback ends up being the 7th round because everyone's drafted them or the 10th, then then whatever. So when you apply that to a super flex league, I think you take a look at the tiers and say I want a quarter I want, you know, three quarterbacks total. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to take two of these late guys that I like and maybe one of those medium type players. And and from league to league, it's different. If you want Pat Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, that's that could be the second and third pick gone in the first round. Um, I wouldn't take that approach. Um, so I'm probably starting my quarterbacks somewhere around round four. But that's yeah, I can it's agree with totally that. different for every league. It, Mike, it, do you have anything to add? Yeah, it's just it's looking at the the point differential inside the position. Like the the running backs, wide receivers are getting in the first round. Com compare them to, let's say you have the one hundred one. Like now you're at the 
back of the or at the back of the second, beginning of the third, what's the difference between those just those running backs there and if you had taken a quarterback compared comparatively to a quarterback you can get in the fourth or the fifth round? They're just quarterbacks are much closer. And more more repeatability points. generally happens Absolutely. at the wide receiver position than the quarterback position from year to year fluctuation. Right. And it's so like to, to finalize what I'm saying is like yeah, you'll have you'll have, every year we'll have a Lamar Jackson, a Patrick Mahomes, one outlier quarterback. But the rest of those guys, they're not that far apart. And let's say you wait, right? Let's say you wait in this two quarterback league and you end up with your first two quarterbacks being later round guys, Ben Roethlisberger and Matthew Stafford. That's right. That's great. Those you, two specifically, if you could position yourself to grab those two guys. And then you grab a third late guy like a Derek Carr or uh, you know, even like a Drew Locke that's a hopeful. Uh, I would be 100% fine with that, and the rest of my roster is loaded. Right. All right, let's go to uh, Tom in Ohio. One-player keeper league, Godwin or Jacobs? <sighs> hmm. That's a great question. I see those guys so similar, respectively. Godwin is to the wide receiver what Jacobs is to the running back. In, in, really? In, yeah, in I my think that's rankings, probably I think. fair. It, it, my first impression is it's hmm. like, oh, Jacobs is riskier, but Godwin's fairly risky in the new situation too, and and done it for a year. And Jacobs was dominant on the ground. I I see it as Jason does. The one thing I'll throw out there before you answer is just that if you're in a one player, two player, three player keeper league, please don't over emphasize the idea of long term commitments to players. Right. Yeah. It's not a it, it's not a dynasty league. If you're in a one, two, three player keeper league, it's okay to have turnover at that keeper position. Don't spend all of your time thinking, because you you might think, oh, wide receiver. I'm just going to go the wide receiver for long term value here. That's not. I, I would actually probably lean the Jacobs side. Those type of leagues, one or two keepers, where people aren't wanting to say keep Julio Jones because like, well, he's 31. What? You you keep him. Right. You know, it's fantastic. All you care about 1400 is 1400 yards counts just as much at 31. Yeah, yeah. so um here I I lean the Josh Jacobs side, but where, it's, it's close. Where do you currently have Josh Jacobs in your running backs? Do you have that number in front of you? Uh I can grab it. I've got Josh Jacobs as my running back 10, Chris Godwin as my wide receiver 7. Okay. So, so they, they're, it, they're 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 If I had those rankings, yeah, I would go with Josh Jacobs. I have Jacobs at 6. And, and that's perfectly fine. Like, but I say it like that every time. It's always <laughs> it's always a whisper. Well, because you're be, what the whisper is saying. Your subtext is, please get the passing work. You're saying, yes. I've, I've got him at. Please get the passing. That's how work. I told uh, John Grude as well. I said, I got him at six. Grude's Grude. I, six targets a game. Come on. Right now, I have Godwin in th at three and Jacobs at eleven in their respective positions. So if I'm into draft. I would probably take Godwin first, and that's how I would approach this. All right, Andres in Albuquerque says, if I purchase the 2020 Ultimate Draft Kit and the NFL is canceled mm. due to COVID-19, mm. do we get a refund or subscription for the following year? Well, this is something we've thought that's about. A great, that's a great question. We Look, Foot Clan has always been great to us. We want to be great to the Foot Clan. If you get the draft kit and there isn't, even though we're making the whole draft kit and it's going to release here in 11 days and we did all the work, and you got to read it. If there's no football this year, that's no good to you. So you get the ultimate draft kit the next year. I mean, that's just it, boom, bam. You're not wasting any money here. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's how we're going to do it. So hopefully we have football. We're also, pl yes. Football. Uh, please have football. <laughs> also, we're we're going to have football. Every Yeah. That's uh, like, I mean, the, yeah. the, everything coming yeah. out. The, the latest things coming out are like. We already know we're going to have players. Without fans, they're letting it happen? Yeah, we're, we know we're going to have players test positive. Like, we're we're figuring out what we're going to do in those situations. It, it's happening. I just want to see the face masks that have a bunch <laughs> of technology built into them. Now, see, the like, face masks. That's, do you guys remember when when players would have these super shredder masks? Yeah. In, You're talking about uh, – In uh, training camp, like Darnell Dockett. Or in, Jason, was it Jason Pierre yeah, Paul? Pierre Did Paul. Pierre Paul have one too? Oh, he, oh, he looked like Shredder. Awesome. And they look – Awesome! They look like superheroes. Let's just do that, man. Jam it all up. Put some kind of filter in there, and we're good to go. Watch them pass out. <laughs> <laughs> then I feel like you jogging. zoom back from the stadium, and it's just the whole. Uh, what's the movie that you love that we hate? Blade oh, Runner. Gosh, Blade Runner. Yeah, it's just Blade dust. It, there's just rolling hill. It's just dystopian football. I will take dystopian as long as it's football. football. <laughs> I agree. I agree. 
No, I mean, look, we have the potential to create some cool technology and like a lot of the stuff that's happening innovation wise right will pay dividends in other areas for longer periods of time well so. remember do you guys remember last season the patriots were so sick with the flu at, like not yes covid didn't exist yet on on planet earth that they had to take two planes i think it was they were going to i want to say tampa bay they were flying down in two planes a sick plane and a healthy plane I mean, the regular flu is going to be far less prevalent this say, year among the players. People joke about us getting sick. We got the three kids, and they're each, and they're in school. And we've had these months where Jason's hacking. We just take turns. I'm hacking, or Mike's hacking. Look, the amount of things we've installed around the studio. <laughs> uh huh. I'm not going to say I'm. You know, we may grow an extra arm or something like that from the level of uh, UV light that will be around the studio. But we ain't getting sick anymore. No, ne- never again. Never yeah, again. Famous last you word. heard it here. Oof. Ugh. All right. Ugh. Maybe sometimes. Yeah, we're definitely going to get sick. All right. Tony in Atlanta, as an analyst, when you stat out a player, each player, are those totals always assuming a full season of games played? Yes and no. 90, <laughs> well, 90- always by definition. <laughs> you can just say no then. Well, but, but it is almost always. <laughs> yes, except when it's not. Well, okay. Almost the always. No, it's not always. Uh, there are players that have a long enough track record of injury that I do consider that in my season long. I, I presume 12 games or 13 games. Most of the time, I project an exact 16 game schedule. There are players I, I account for injury. For. I can only think of one player, and, I, and I'm sure there were three or four, but the only player is coming to mind that I know I nerfed the stats a little bit of because I expect a couple missed games was James Conner. I, that was the only one that I, I kind of actively said. I didn't stat him specifically for 14 games, but I, I nerfed the stats a little bit, assuming that there will be so some missed time. That's almost always. Mike, What do you, do, do you account uh, for that? I, I project 16. I will bake in some injury risk where like games are lower, but I, I'm still projecting for 16. Though The only guys where I actually lop off games are quarterback positions yes. like like Chicago where I have Foles projected as the main starter but I think Trubisky plays some games same thing for the Chargers uh, for the Chargers of, with the Taylor and, and the and the Rook did you go 16 for Fitzpatrick in Miami or did you split those no two? I split those okay. as well um yeah so there you go it is Important, you mentioned one word there, Mike, that is relevant to the way we project in stat players, which is risk. Yes. yes. We build a risk rating into each player. So even if we project someone for 16 games, which is the majority of the time, like you said, if they have a high risk rating, you are you need to take that into account when you're making that value proposition in your draft. Yeah, if you're looking at two players back to back, they're projected about the same, same position, everything's good, and one's got a risk rating of eight and the other's got a risk rating of two, that's an easy choice oh, for was it. Was it Justin Tuck that had the mask? And not Jason Pierre-Paul. That might have been right. Yeah, I think it was Justin Tuck. Thank you, Al. Um, let's go here. Dynasty trade, first round uh, question. Sam in Hoboken. Oh, we got Sheboygan and Hoboken. <laughs> this, these out towns are lit. <laughs> no high fives. Get your hands off of each other. <laughs> Would you trade Leonard Fournette and the 105 mm. rookie pick okay, for Cortland Sutton and Marlon Mack? Wow. Okay, I'm gonna, need, I'm gonna need to hear that again. I was looking at Justin Tuck's wow. face mask. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was. You, just, got, you could uh, wear that in here. Yeah, I would be safe everywhere I go. The grocery store, I'm just wearing Justin Tuck's <laughs> helmet. <laughs> Nothing and, can get through the mesh. No. Yeah. All right. Would you trade Leonard Fournette and the 105 rookie? Okay. For Cortland Sutton and Marlon Mack. Oh man. And what I love about this question is, I look at like Fournette and Mack maybe in the exact same possibly like longevity quotient like those two players they might be expiring <laughs> like yeah, and the one check the date <laughs> and the 105 could be Cortland sutton's teammate jerry, jerry judy. judy oh this question is ridiculous next question so let's assume it's jerry judy there okay and, and, and you might not be able to get but would you trade leonard fournette and jerry judy for Cortland sutton and marlon mack i would not i would rather have the season That's, of leonard this trade's fournette. incredible Fournette and Mac are both playing on different teams next year. Agreed. Uh, 100%. Hopefully. Like, they hope they're playing on I will take team. the Sutton and Mac <laughs> As side. In, like, they hope they have a job. Exactly. Yeah, I'll take the Sutton and Mac side. That's how I lean. 
Or just, you know. And and known that Cortland Sutton is a great wide receiver. We hope Jerry Judy is a great wide receiver. Correct. Correct. Anthony in Norco, California. How are you drafting tight ends in a tight end premium dynasty Ooh. startup? Tight ends get 1.5 points per reception. It's an interesting question, too, because some of the tight ends that are kind of that have been in the conversation, the upper echelon, Ertz, Kelsey in particular, are older. They are getting up there. Correct. So a tight end premium in a dynasty startup. I'm not going to do much. I, I mean. Uh, As in you're not going to I'm overcompensate. Not gonna uh, yeah, I'm not going to change too much. I feel like, you know, it's it's every tight end will get that same bump. It's kind of like when, when people ask the question, well, what about six point for passing touchdown quarterback leagues? Qu you know, quarterbacks are a premium. Do I bump them up? Well, it happens for all of them. I mean, it'll rearrange some of them. Obviously, the guys who are. Well, more what it does, it, it, not necessarily the rearranging is it takes Travis Kelsey from being the number one tight end to possibly the number one scoring non-quarterback. Because like, Travis Kelsey frequently, if the, we, we do the experiment, he would have been the wide receiver seven. You give him one and a half per reception, and he, he easily jumps to being the number one yeah, but wide it, receiver. It's ironic. At a what, position where you just play one player, though. And and the, But there's so few. You're, you're So this is very specific information, right? You're, you're basically, to me, in a dynasty startup – I would be interested in Mark Andrews. I would be interested in uh, George Kittle to pay the premium. You would pay – George Kittle – Kittle's in, a, the best option in Kittle the Kittle in this format is probably a back of the first, if not – Yes. He's at least a second-round pick. He's the best tight end in this format. Yeah, if yes. you wanted – Might be if, the best player in this format. If you format. wanted one of those two guys and you want to pay up, fine, go do it outside Andrews of those two guys. Andrews is not in that category for me. He is for me, but – Because he's, a he's more touchdown dependent. Right. He's very low – PPR compared to yeah I, I think he'll just continue to get more and more involved Hayden Hurst gone I'm, uh, that's projecting okay, okay. forward but um, I'm just saying they're young yeah. and involved um, you know whereas Travis Kelsey is like okay he, he's probably the the one at a tight end this year but how many years left does Travis Kelsey really have and if there's a dynasty startup yeah, that, and you're not betting. I mean, look, betting on tight ends that haven't done it that's not a fun bet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there some hit, some don't. You gonna you gonna pay a premium for Noah Fant? You gonna pay a premium for Mike Gesicki? I'm not. I'm not gonna pay a premium for those what guys. About, what about Q? No, oh, Jerry, he's old. I know. I know. I just wanted to say. Oh, that. oh yeah. uh, that's it. <laughs> no, I'll. I'll. Here's what I'll do. I'll sign oh. a, a a relatively under the radar Jonu Smith. Have him explode, and then I'll be happy. That's fair. Not physically explode. I hope not. I would be very <laughs> unhappy. Okay. All right. My my tight end just exploded. That'd be bad. You love Joe New this year, though. I like him. I, I mean, I guess he's going to end up being attached to me because he's my number seven tight end. I yeah. like him too. I mean, that's 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 love for Joe New. Yeah, number seven. I I think he could be good. But you love him. I you love him. him. You love. You want him to <laughs> score your touchdowns. All right, Danny in Massachusetts. Oh, man. Are there any players you treat differently in leagues that give bonus points for a hundred yards, long touchdowns, etc.? Uh, sure, sure. I mean, Julio. I mean, Julio's a player that that, sure. that is a premium in in bonus points for hundred yard games. You might even look at players like T.Y. Hilton or, or or other ones that we play. Our league of record actually does give a two point bonus for uh, forty yard touchdowns. So guys like Tyreek or Deshaun Jackson, Hollywood, Hollywood, they can they can put up monstrous plays. I have never once. And maybe you guys do. I'm. This is great insider information against my league mates. I have never once, ever, thought about that scoring um, aspect. Aspect. No. When making a draft pick, ever a single time in the whatever the, fifteen years I've been in that league, the hundred yards makes a much bigger difference to me. Yeah, it's it's more predictable. Yeah, and it's you know there are wide receivers that are touchdown dependent, and there are ones that are heavy yardage guys. Julio is quite simply annoying. And predicting touchdowns. But if you get a bonus for 100-yard games, that he makes, he's probably my number one. There you go. All right. Paul in Deary, Ireland. Oh, oh man. Bonjour. Oh, Paul. Now, if I, let me just say this before I ask the question. The way you just reacted to Ireland compared to the way you reacted to the United Kingdom earlier. Well, Ireland you, is in you, the United Kingdom. The, uh, that's true. That's a strong point. <laughs> so, there you go. 
But you, why, why so particular about Ireland? Why well, I so just love extra- specifics. When you say the UK, I'm just like, that could be Canada. Yeah. Oh, this, yeah, it's this better part, mental picture. Part of it. Exactly. All right. In my dynasty startup draft, I ended up uh, drafting both Melvin Gordon and Philip Lindsay. Gross. Would you keep, <laughs> would you keep both or try to trade one away? I would try to trade the one named Philip away. Uh, That's what I would be trying to do. Who's who's buying Philip Lindsay right now? This man bought him. In, <laughs> they bought him in a dynasty. Oh, in Ireland. Ireland. But there's a difference. You end up drafting, but in a dynasty startup, everybody is drafted at some point. Maybe he drafted if Philip Lindsay really. If there's ever late. a time to sell him in a dynasty, it's now because you don't have any of the bad. I mean, just point to something in the past that's going to be better than something in the future. I would hold on to both these guys and have oh. the handcuff. I would hold them. I don't like because just, of I what like. you would get for Philip. Exactly, and uh, you're playing dynasty. I'm rolling the dice that Philip Lindsay ends up on a different. I guess team if you can get nothing, year. you might as well have That's the, the handcuff for I, your guy. I really think you'll get nothing. That's a strong point, Mike in Hopkins, Michigan. Okay, mm, that's not a bonjour. Mm, it's not. But it is in Hopkins, oh, DeAndre, Michigan. <laughs> With Jason Witten gone, and oh, is this a set? Is this from you, Brooks? No, right. sir. With Jason Witten gone and a premier quarterback under center for Dallas, why is Blake Jarwin so low in the ranking? It's a it's a great question. Okay. I ask myself all the time because he's, <laughs> he's lower for me. Of course, he's lower because. Can I remind people, Jason Witten's already missed an entire season, just for those that aren't aware, that are waiting for the Blake Jarwin explosion? like that. I know it takes a while for tight ends, and he was much younger at the time. I think he was a rookie. He w- It was second year, I believe. He might have been a rookie. He was a rookie. You're talking about 2017? I'm just saying there's a yes. year where he was entirely – where Witten was no, already 2018 gone. 2018 was yeah. when Witten was, was gone. Yeah, it, oh, was, okay. it was Blake okay. Jarwin's second year. So we've been here before. Now Jarwin was – Better last year, but it is a far cry to jump from 35, 40 receptions to the, you know, six, 700 yards, Jason Witten level of involvement in the offense. I have, Bla- that's why he is lower. That's I have all I'm Blake saying. Blake Jarwin ahead of Austin Hooper and Hayden Hurst. Yeah, I love it. I don't, but, but I, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, no, man. Mike's I am in. the best about Blake Jarwin right now because it's always like, yeah, let's go. I know I obviously have much lower than you, but let's go. I am trying to be measured, but hear me now. It's hard to contain it. Hear me now. Jarwin will be on a lot of my teams. I have been holding Blake Jarwin on our dynasty team. He'll be on a lot of waiver wires. Yeah. He's going to be. To start the year is all I'm saying. Jarwin has a chance. Is it your strategy right now? If if Jarwin's going to be on a lot of your teams, you 100% of the leagues that you're in, 100% of them, you can get him with your last pick. (laughs) Is that your strategy this year, Mike? Why I have him ranked so low? No, no. You, <laughs> I'm <laughs> manipulating the market? No, I'm just saying regard, you could put him as your number one tight end, and in 100% of the leagues, he will be available for your last pick. Cooper, Gallup, Lamb, Elliott will all have more receptions than Blake Jarwin. I So the fifth uh, option of an offense, that, I'm going that, to take my shot at a Gesicki, who could be the number two option in the it offense. It certainly feels like that, but... I I think Jarwin will have more receptions than CeeDee Lamb. I think that's that's fair. They're, they're, it could be close. But. Okay. Could still put him at four in the offense. But it could. I got you. All right. Uh, last question here. I don't know who it's from. Oh, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zeke or Kenyon Drake? DJ Chark, J.K. Dobbins. Is that the question, This Brooks? is a dynasty. I'm yeah, not right. sure I understand. So, yes, sir. All three of those? Yep. Whew. So yeah, dynasty okay, trade. Give me all three of them. Dynasty trade, Zeke, or Kenyon Drake, DJ Chark, J.K. Dobbins. That one. Give me the package. This is where I'm willing to trade Zeke. Yeah, this, this is what you need in a haul for Zeke. You need to be able to trade is, Zeke for – I mean, that's – This is unbelievable. Like, Kenyon Drake for this year is going to be awesome. I think – Long term, he'll probably be signed to the Cardinals, but maybe he's not. And then the following year, you just get to turn to J.K. Dobbins, who's going to be a beast when he's the starter for Baltimore. And you get D.J. It's Chark. Certain, it certainly seems. Yeah, D.J. Chark's the best player in this <laughs> this, this, is a, this side. You got yeah. You got to take it. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are the bids on eBay up to there, Judge? 
Twelve dollars. <laughs> oh man, man that's oh, disappointing. No, twelve thousand. Fifty-five. Oh, there it is. Are you? Uh, how you feeling back in the captain's stair there, Judge? Love it back here. Yeah, it's great it's to nice. be back. You glad to be out of the house? Yes. Wait a I minute. think we figured out before, like at lunch, that you were probably the person that has been outside of your home the least. Yeah. That sounds This about was right. the first time <laughs> that he studied. He, his mailbox is overflowing. This wasn't the first time, was it? Not the first. Okay. Second. I'm sad to learn yep, that. Second. <laughs> I, it's, I'm sad to learn that this is not the captain's chair that I sit in. I've, no, I feel no, like no, you're I mean, just learning that now. But I'm at the center of the table. No. I like how you, you're opening your <laughs> arms. It's the Truman up. Show complex again. He's opening his arms wide, like we all don't have the exact same chair. <laughs> but mine's in the middle. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.